There are basically four ways to create a component within your assembly or subassembly. The purpose of this video is to show you all four methods and explain some of the difficulties and advantages and disadvantages to all. Now, the main objective is when you finally have your assembly and you have your components underneath of it, that the components themselves, when expanded, contain both the bodies and all the sketches that were related to it. That's the main objective. Let's go through the processes and show you how this is accomplished. The first way is to create the component as an individual file. As you notice, this component has one body and many sketches below it. And it's all included on one file which was saved independently. Once I have this file, I can go back to the assembly and simply place it into it. Right click on the file and insert to current design. This will automatically bring in the component and all its associated bodies and sketches in the right order, as you can see. These files are linked. This file is linked. Now, if you don't want it linked, you can right click and break the link. It doesn't matter. It still will retain the bodies and sketches below it. This is probably one of the better methods of using Fusion 360 to create your components and keep the bodies and sketches together. The next method is to create a component as you're making features. In this particular model, I have three sketches. The first one is visible. If I go ahead and extrude this, and I want to go a negative 12, there's a reason for that, I'll get to it in a second, and I want to make it a new component, that's fine. This method will work. But the problem is, you'll notice has the component down here and the sketch is up here. The body appear in the right place, but the sketch is not. Let's go ahead and turn on the next sketch and add this as a feature to this, and I'll show you the final product at the end. So let's go ahead and just extrude this, come out, we're going to go bi-directional on this, two sides. The first one's going to be 13, and the next one's going to be 29 minus 13. And it is going to be a new, comp uh, a join, not a new component because I'm adding it to the existing. So it'll be a join and say OK. Again, you notice the body is still there, but the sketch is still outside the component. This is not your our advantage. Let's turn on the last one and make this a quick cut. We'll pick on the surface. We'll make it a cut, and it's going to go in by minus 5. Again, it's going to be a cut, and it's added to the component. No problem, but the sketches are still outside. So the solution to this is very simple. Make the component active and simply you can do it all at once if you want or left click and drag those into the component one at a time. It's up to you how you do it. And then you'll have the ideal situation with the sketches and the component bodies in the same underneath the component just like we said before. This is one method a lot of people use and a very effective method. Don't forget to go back to the top level. That process of dragging the sketch can be done at one at a time or all at once. It's up to you. This is the second method of making a component. The next method is very, very similar to the last one. I'm going to use the same model, going back to the beginning of it, is to basically create the component before you start any of the modeling. Pick new component and leave on the activation so it'll be activated automatically. An empty component and say OK. Now, as you can see, the component is active and the sketches are there, but they kind of faded out. But the first one is on, so I can go ahead and just add an extrusion. It's the same model, but I'll just go ahead and add an extrusion of minus 12. I just do it as a new body. It automatically adds it to the component. But as before, you see the problem is the sketch did not come along with it. So the solution to this is very much similar to the same one. After you finish or 
just after you finish making the body, left click and drag the sketch into to the component and then you'll be just like the other one, all in good shape. Everything be under the component. If I go ahead and turn on the next one, do the same thing. If I extrude this, I'll do it in two directions. And the first one's going to be 13 and the second one's going to be 29 minus 13. And it's going to be a join. And say OK. Again, the body went the right place, but the sketch is still outside. So simply drag it into it, and you have the same condition, which is what you want the sketches and the bodies underneath the component. This is the third method, very similar to the second. The last method is often mistakenly used by many people, but can get you into serious trouble and should be avoided. Well, let's go ahead and make a body from this first sketch as we did before. I'll pick on it and go backwards. Minus 12. It's the same model, but I'm going to make a new body, not a new component. So people will make the bodies right along. Everything is fine, they think. And then you go to the second one. I'll do the second one too. I'll make it visible and also extrude it. I'll just do two of them. This goes both ways. Same model again. First one is 13 and the second one is 29 minus 13. Again, it's a join, not a cut. And it's a going to be into that one body. So here's the mistake that most people now make. By doing it like this and then right clicking on the body and say convert components or create components from bodies, you get into a situation where you cannot move the sketches into the component. If I made the component active, I should be able to drag them, but you cannot. And this is not very advantageous. You'll get an error. You, you cannot do it. The error comes up and it says illegal reconstruction. So try to avoid using create components from bodies. Do it one of the other three methods. Avoid this one entirely. Because your main objective is not to have a bunch of sketches up here under your assembly, but inside each component. I hope this helped you create better components in Fusion 360.